So then. Hey, hey, we're going. So why don't why don't you play me what you have? Yeah. Is, is there a way to make this when it's when it's playing to make it follow it? Yes. Uh, so you see the group of several buttons up next to your start and stop controls, just to the right of those. Mm -hmm. There's one oh, that's an yeah. arrow pointing to the right. That is scroll oh. to reach time markers. And so whenever the playhead reaches the edge of the screen, it'll scroll. Okay, cool. So I'll play yep. it then. Okay. And so, from here, you're thinking about, like, how to try to do a drop? Yeah, it was originally, I started uh, just looking up how to do dubstep, and it just kind of turned into this, but then eventually, like, mm -hmm. I, I didn't have this. It was just this, I think. Mm -hmm. But I found the, the vocal loop, and I thought mm -hmm. it sounded nice, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, but because of the vocal loop, it made it sound less like dubstep. And in my head, when I got to closer to the drop, it in my head it started sounding more like future bass. But yeah, no, I, I kind of agree. It it feels like it's going into kind of a future bassy, almost. It could also be like melodic dubstep too, you know, like Seven Lions yeah. type stuff. Feels like it could yeah, it could be, move into. Oh yeah, that that'd be kind of cool too. That that's probably what it would. Oh, it sounds cool. I didn't think of that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So there's, there's a problem that you're trying to solve, right? That is, you have to figure out how to make a drop that, like, works with this intro. Right. Generally speaking, what you want to do is you want to find some element in your intro that you can carry over into the drop. Whether that be chord progression, whether that be sound, whether that be your drums. You know, there's, like, a, a lot of different ways that you can pull something in. Like, something that occurred to me is, like, you could take uh, a slice of that vocal loop that you've got, Oops. and you could actually, uh, you could put that in a sampler and you could play it like a lead, right? A sampler? What is that? So, uh, if you double-click, or if you pull up the, the channel rack, and you find the channel for that, that audio clip. So if you oh. click on that, down there is your waveform. Right, that's your actual audio clip. Mm -hmm. If you right click on that, there should be an option, and you can do this in the browser as well. But if you right click on that, there should be an option to open in like new sampler channel. So, what was the point of the right? Doing this so, like having a second, right? Window, so, so what this does, what this does is it allows you to actually play that sample and, and transpose it by playing different notes on the keyboard. If we click, there's, there's like three tabs at the top of the window. So, you see in the, in the audio clip. Uh, channel window. There's only two tabs there, right? But you see in the oh. sampler window, there's a third tab there. Okay. And that third tab gives you a bunch of really useful things, including this volume envelope, right? So we can control the volume of note over time using the volume envelope. It's basically your envelope one in Serum, okay? Yeah, okay. Just, like, enable the envelope, right? Just hit the, hit the, uh, the light there, and then now when you play uh, Play a note, keyboard. It like. Oh, I see. So yeah. you can you can just use the same element that you use, and oh, I get it. Yeah, now that. you get it. Then, oh, hmm? interesting. You know, I mean, this is basically just sound design at this point, right? So it's a yeah. question of like, you know, how uh, you know how do how do you want to shape the sound? I personally would go with something that is like shorter attack time. So that it's more, oh, it like comes on immediately. Oh, so it's just more like a note. I got yeah, it. so it's just more like a note. Exactly. I'm trying to think if I want to get into this. I think I do. I think I do. I want to show you this little technique. Because the thing right now is if you hold a note, right, you're actually going to get yeah, the, the, full the sample. You're going to get the full sample, right? So if we want to be able to hold a note and have it actually stay the same note the whole time, what we have to yeah. do is we have to set up a loop where it's going to loop a little section of that sound. And that's kind of obnoxious to do in FL Studio, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So, uh, go ahead and navigate back to the first of the three tabs, 
and you're going to right click on your audio uh, on your waveform again and then you're going to right click there and you're going to say edit in audio editor and this is going to bring up edison uh mm -hmm. if you hit s that will turn it back to the waveform view the other view that you're looking oh. at there is a spectral view it's like the frequencies from oh, low to okay. high yeah so uh, if we play this, right, this is the whole sample. And so what we want to do is we want to, first we want to trim this so that it only is uh, the the very first note of the sample. Uh, click and drag inside of the, the waveform view yep. to select little chunks. And then you mm -hmm. can press control delete, which will delete everything except what you've selected. Figure out kind of where the, the first note ends, right? Like if you just, if you play from the very start, so start with that and then hit uh, control delete, right? And that'll trim the audio to just that little bit. Oh, you want to, oh, it deletes everything else besides the selected, okay. Got that's, it. yeah, so so that's that's what trim is, right? If you just select something and hit delete, it'll it'll get rid of what you've selected. If you hit oh, control delete, oh. it'll, it'll get rid of everything except what you've selected. Yeah. We probably only want the first like half of this, right? Like okay. it starts pitching down about halfway through, isn't that right? Doesn't that seem, yeah. So just hitting, you know, we want to yeah. catch it before it starts to dip down. So right about there. So hit control delete again. And now select maybe like the last 30% of this. And now there's the big row of buttons at the, t at the top of the Edison UI. I think mm -hmm. it's the one that's like a recycle symbol almost. It's like two arrows in a thing. I'm pretty sure that is the, yeah, that's the loop button. So that has now created a loop. Let me open up FL Studio and do this. I, it's like I'm trying to remember what my muscle memory is for doing this. Okay, that's very strange. When I when I hit the button, it brings up a dialog for me. Oh, it probably brings it up for you too, and I just am not seeing it because of the screen share. Got it, right? Oh, the, the dialog of like the um, loop tuner. The, to accept it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's what I was looking for. And okay. you can play with you can play with the length mm -hmm. of the crossfade, and you can play with the blur amount and scale until you get something that sounds what you, kind you of reasonable. Length go down or, uh... Uh, I would ge generally to make it sound smoother, you would want the length to go up. This is all something that you want to just kind of do by ear. I'm wondering if it's because I uh, is the waveform just abruptly stops as opposed to it being yeah. So that's like what the that's what the, the tune right loop line. that's what the tune loop is actually helping to fix, oh, right? If you look at the, where your loop point is, actually, it's part way up the waveform, and so it's it's a smooth wrap around, even though it ends on something kind of weird. And that's what that's what so tune loop does is it is it does that for you to make sure that there's no click so now the second button from the right is actually a, a place that you can drag and drop from and so if you open the channel rack you can drag and drop this edited sample into your sampler channel oh shit. nice uh, okay so you made a new channel when you did that that actually created a, a new sample oh, in, channel. Oh, I get it. But if you drag and drop it on top of the, the of button the... for the old one, it will put it in there. There you go. So now, when you open up that window... Ah, okay, never mind. When you dragged it, it only grabbed the piece that was selected. So it only grabbed the looping part. So if we go back to Edison and we double-click in that window, it'll deselect that little chunk. And now, when you drag and drop, it will grab the whole sample. Oh, I see. oh, I got it, I got it. Oh, I see what I'm doing now. Yes. I got it. So now, you have a sample with a little loop at the end of it. And when you play and you hold a note, it does that. Yeah. And depending on how well you choose your loop point and yeah. how easy it is to loop the sample, you know. It's just, just a bunch of, like, fine-tuning. It's a bunch of fine-tuning. It's sound design, right? But the general idea of it is there, and you can you can use this to create, like, a sustained, playable instrument out of any sound that you have as a waveform. I got it. That makes sense. And so you could use this and then, you know, add a bunch of effects to it and create a lead out of that. And then the thing that's nice about that is because you've used the same material 
to create the drop lead. At some level, there's the same audio in there as the vocal loop in the intro. Mm -hmm. That lead will sound kind of like that loop, and it'll sort of connect the two sec uh, sections together <laughs> sonically. And so if you yeah. make a, a, a drop that prominently features that lead, it's more likely to sound kind of related to your introduction. This is the kind of thing that you want to think about and do when you're, wor when you're worrying about making cohesive sections. You want to look at your intro and you think about your drop and think, okay, what can I steal from my intro to either just have it carry over and it just is the same in the drop, or what can I use to make something that will exist in the drop? Isn't going to be mm -hmm. exactly the same, but will kind of at some level have the same pieces, right? Yeah. You can also, when you're working in the opposite direction, right, and you have a drop and you're trying to make an intro, you can do exactly the same thing, right? You could, you could take a drop lead, put a big reverb on it, right, mm -hmm. and then do this sampling thing on that big reverb tail and create a pad that has kind of the same frequency content as your drop lead, right? And then you could play that pad in the intro. Oh, that makes sense. I always do the, um... I do that for like making risers sometimes. For, yeah, hundred percent. I don't know if you want to call it a riser, but or like a sweep, I think, or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's sweep riser. riser. It's all the same stuff. Same yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's that's one of the best ways to to make sections that feel connected is just think about what elements you can share. And it can be sounds, it can be rhythms, it can be chord progressions, it can be melodies. Right. One of my favorite ways to do a drop in an intro that that feel different but also feel connected is to have the same melody over different chords same melody over different chords right mm. oh i like see if, yeah. like if you have a drop melody you know you have some sort of a chord progression going on and if you can find a second chord progression that uh, that also works with that melody then you can use mm -hmm. that for the introduction and then the listeners are already familiar with the melody right they can already kind of like hum along by the time they get to the drop but then the drop puts yeah. that melody in a new context, and so it feels fresh and new. It's all wow. about sharing elements, but have uh, but having contrast too. It's right. that balance between them, sounding enough different that it feels like you've gone someplace new and that it's interesting, but enough the same that it feels familiar. And right. I, there's still a problem for me of sure. Um, for just the transition, like transitioning. Yes. I don't know if it's the right form, like. When it, when it gets to the end of the build-up, right? Right there, yeah. like depending upon what genre you've been doing, like this little this little bit right here, this like half, like quarter measure, or like mm -hmm. even just the full measure, it ch can change from either just being like nothing to like some, like a vocal chop or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even just like a, like a, a, a mini riser, like even like something mm -hmm. else, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, a growl. I just don't understand it. Bunch of different stuff. I just don't understand what, what to do. I've been like playing around with this all day and I still haven't found anything. That's that's like one of my main problems with this. You know what I'm trying to say? Are, are you talking about a systemic problem that is true in all of your productions or a problem with this well, specific track? I guess you could say all because I've never made a full thing. I believe you. I mean, mo almost everybody starts by just making yeah. little sections. Right. right. Yeah. You exactly. Either you I, you you make a loop, and then you either explode that out into a drop, or you explode that into. Yeah, and I've been wanting to try and just make like my own. here. I'll open this. Just a bunch of arps that I made, like playing around with it. Sure. But I just followed like a a YouTube video for like mm -hmm. a few thing. Wait. Sure. Is the... Yeah, yeah. This is it. So everybody gets started, really. I don't know. Really slow. <coughs> kind of like a Stranger Things type mm -hmm. vibe or whatever. Yeah, I get you. But I don't know if there's any like drop per se, or if this would be the drop or whatever. But... But I feel like the whole song, the, the transitions, there were no transitions, and I tried to base the song off having, like, just sudden, instant transitions, you know what I mean? Mm hmm Which is most section transitions that aren't moving d directly from, like, you know, intro or build-up, like, to drop. Like, that's, that's the one transition that, like, 
most of the time, you know, that's where you put your risers, that's where you do your mm -hmm. effects and things to, to... Oh, maybe that's... Oh, okay. That, so that's why I'm having a problem then, because it's, uh, it's the only thing that actually has a real transition, per se. Okay, that makes sense then. So I just gotta... All it is is just force myself to keep playing around with uh, how the drop will work, or to figure out on what drop I even want, right? Yeah, like, I would say, don't like the trans uh, weirdly even though the transition is next chronologically right i would say mm -hmm. you don't have to you don't have to work chronologically when you're making the track right you can right. start anywhere and build in any direction but with this that you have right now it sounds perfectly reasonable it sounds like an intro right you yeah. just need to make a drop right something that works for the song yeah or works with the song yeah and once you have a drop, then work on massaging the two of them together with risers and oh. figuring out exactly how it works, right? Because if it. you don't so know... I'm, just, I'm working wrong and I'm backwards. Or not backwards, but like, I don't have to work. Force myself to make a transition. Yeah, it's kind of like oh. you're trying to like apply the glue before you've figured out like what two pieces are even going to fit together. Because okay. the whole the whole point of the transition is to be a transition. It's to smoothly blend one section into another, or create contrast between the one section and the other. You you think about techniques like foreshadowing, right? Like where you, mm -hmm. you know, like if you have again, if you have a drop lead or something, right? Something a lot of people will do is they'll like filter it so that it only it might be like a really full spectrum uh, lead in the drop, but you might filter it so that it's like only the mids of it and like add some mm -hmm. reverb and delay or something that it might not have in the drop and then you like play little snippets of the melody line as it's doing the build up and you've got your like risers and your snare roll and whatever else going on and it's like you know it just sounds like some little element and then when the drop actually comes in and then you have the lead right you're like oh like okay i see where that was going uh, yeah just don't worry about transitions until you've got both sections together that makes sense um also there's another thing that you said uh, a little bit ago is yeah uh, I forget what you said but it made me think of um to remove the base here or this this just creating contrast during during no to remove like remove it wait this is really high pitched why to remove the actual base during this to because in the drop you yeah. only want the base right so you mm -hmm. or you maybe I would like lower the volume as opposed to having it or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, know, I, I, you, you could you could cut it, you could high pass it, you could do a lot of different mm -hmm. things, and and all of them are perfectly reasonable. But yeah, your instincts are very good. That's exactly the kind of thing that you want to do. At you know, one of the things that makes an EDM drop feel like a drop, right, is that it's this right. moment of immense contrast, right? I was talking about this mm -hmm. whole thing of like it's like mids only, in the intro, and then yeah. You know, and oh, that's it what gets, it was. Mid mids only. Yeah, yeah mids yeah, only. Mids only. Yeah. Yeah. And so, absolutely, that's a great idea to to remove the base from, from like seventeen through twenty five. Wait, for what? Here? I'm saying leave it in okay. from from like one to seventeen, right? Have it play yeah, yeah. four times, but then just delete those two, right? Have yeah, it just I, cut out for, there. Uh, yeah, because it's definitely important in the beginning. It like, is. Uh, it is. Here. And that's that's what a lot of people will do, right? Like you'll have like maybe some base at different points during your intro, but once you move into the build. That's when you really transition to just mids. Right. And then it gets like... Yeah. Sounds kind of flat now, though. I feel like the, the, the bass is like hiding a lot of uh, how flat the song is. Sure. <laughs> so what you can do is you can apply like a high pass filter to it that mm -hmm. sweeps up from the bottom and kind of slowly fades it out over the course of that riser happening. Yeah, that's good though because um, having it slowly go there, especially because I have a lot of other random shit. Like the, I have a uh, this in here. Mm -hmm. I just threw this in here randomly. You can barely hear it, but it was because I, I originally thought it was going to be feature base. Yeah. But you know, it's kind of like whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, there's supposed to be an LFO right in there, so it, it like wubs faster. But gotcha. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. so yeah, I just gotta keep playing around with the track then. Yeah, I mean, I, like I, I think uh, I think really what you gotta do is you just gotta start learning how to do future based drops. 
Mm-hmm. Or melodic dubstep. I kind of like. Or that melodic idea dubstep. Melodic yeah. Dubstep. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Big super so slow stacks. Big growls. Yeah. Just kind of play around. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely try that out. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's that's everything though. Well, uh, sick. Yeah, it's a lot of my questions. I appreciate it, man. You're very welcome. I'm happy to help. All right. All right. I well, appreciate that. It was, it was a good session and stuff. Yeah, let me know how it goes, and, and if you have any more questions, just let me know. Appreciate it, man. Tip. Catch you around. Good luck.